listening to these talks in person, it's been great. Um, my talk is slightly different. Um, it's more all the other speakers, they were talking about the nobility, all the good work. This one is about me. You know, uh, in, in all of us, the key thing is us. If you can satisfy yourself, you can do anything you want. So, so you know, you know, you can read this. You know, I travel for a living. That is who I am. You know, it sounds very different. You know, here I'm holding a koala. You know, the koala is rather cuddling me. It's in Queensland, Australia. You know, I'm jumping. This is the Adumu dance with the Maasai warriors of Kenya. You basically jump. The higher you jump, the prettier girl you get for your wife. And here, you know, this is Maldives in the Indian Ocean. I'm sipping an umbrella drink. You know, what is... What runs common across these three? What runs common across these three is the fact that I'm having, a, having fun. I'm on a holiday, and yet I'm making money. And uh, that, was, uh, that is something that you know, I, want to, uh, I want to talk about, is <clears throat> how can going on a holiday help you make money? You know, we normal, normal people, you know, we are all normal people, normal people like us, we do not understand how we can make money on a holiday. And if you have that question, then I would like to tell you my story. And then you would maybe understand how I make it and maybe you know, uh, push your limits and find out what else can you do. Um, so to start with, I'll tell you my story. You know, I'm a regular Indian like all of you, um, like most of us, you know, middle class, Small town, grew up in Jamshedpur. Grandfather uneducated, grandmother uneducated. Father was the first educated in the family. Studied hard, you know, got the best education that my father could give me. Um, went up, did my engineering, mechanical like most of you here. Some of you, not most of you. Um, you know, then went up the rat race, you know, the corporate world, working, climbing up the corporate ladder, making money. You know, I was at that stage in my life. Maybe I was 26, 27. You know, I had money. I had a good job. And then I was ready to go into the term that the world says settling down. You know, which means getting a wife, having beautiful children, you know, nice moving into a nice house, having a nice car. You know, I had everything planned out for me, you know. But, you know, there was this emptiness inside. And I was empty. I was hollow inside. I felt like something was missing. You know, something, I had everything that the world wanted me to have, but yet I was empty inside. So, so, so that is what irked me, you know. Like, I have everything. What, what is missing? And uh, from, from the time I was a young boy, I had this dream of seeing the world, you know, experiencing it, learning from it, you know. So I said, why, why don't I travel the world? So I quit my job. I came back home. I told my dad I quit my job. I'm going to travel my world. And he said, what? His exact reaction, you know, what? And he was in a state of shock. And then I saw, uh, told that to my friends. And they, each one of them said, what? Because uh, they all thought that I had a good head on my shoulders, you know, that I was a sensible guy and I would not take such rash, rash uh, decisions. And um, so, so all these uh, people, they, they started dubbing me as crazy, you know, Pagal, you know, like, uh, uh, like one of our earlier speakers here said, you know, faltu, you know, faltu in the head. So, so with a lot of negativity around me, you know, and these are people I grew up with, people I trusted, my father, my sister, my brother, and my friends, you know, my close friends, and they all started doubting me. So I started to doubt myself. I said, is this what I want to do? But somewhere deep down, I was stupid. I was passionate. I was crazy. I was young, and I had a lot of energy. I have, I've been blessed with energy, and that is something that pushed me on, you know, something that me, pushed me to, you know, take me to that extra mile, right? And, uh, you know, but I started, you know, I started. I said, okay, let, let me do something. So I started, and this is how I started, okay? I bought, a, I bought myself a bullet, Packed myself, uh, my belongings in two saddlebags, a toolkit here, and a helmet for safety. And uh, off I rode. And, um, you know, 
on the very first day, now, to be very honest with all of you, I was very, very scared. You know, a big guy like me, I was really scared. You know, I was like, what if my father is right? What if my friends are right? You know, what if the world is right? What if I turn to be a failure? You know, what would happen to me? I would have just thrown away, you know, solid years of education, solid years of learning, um, a good job, a great career, lots of money. And that fear lasted about eight hours, you know. I met, I met these uh, group of motorcyclists, you know, I, random strangers, you know, people I haven't had the, never had the chance of knowing. And uh, they invited me to their family wedding. The next three days, I was with them, you know, having fun, dancing. It was an occasion of joy. That's it. I mean, that was the end of my fear. And here I am, eight years down the line. I'm still traveling. And I'm still living my dream. Um, so, so what I'm trying to say is, is fear is, is essential. It is, it is an important part of you. Uh, but, but let's not let it conquer us. So I, I, chose, I chose to not be overcome by fear. So I, I let it be there, you know, I let it be there. Fear is good, nervousness is good, so I let it be there. And uh, so, so with this journey, I did, I travel all around India, took about nine months, about 46,000 kilometers. And it was, uh, it was an absolute joy. Uh, the, the experience was fantastic. And then I started going out, you know, because once I had seen my country, I was desperate to see the world. So I just went out. I started doing, you know, everything else. I started skydiving in the United States. I started uh, scuba diving in the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. I, you know, I, then I started uh, going to Iran. I learned, uh, learned a little bit of Persian there. I went to Burma, to the forests of Burma, and I, you know, I was spent time with the war-torn tribes there. Uh, I learned, I learned everything. I wanted to do different things. I wanted to, there were certain things that I'm very passionate about, especially in the areas of wildlife, in the areas of adventure in the areas of contributing something back. And uh, travel helped me do that. And um, you know, that, is, that is what I do actually. You know, like for example, uh, Ms. Hasina, she was talking about how we can help communities, right? And uh, everybody has a weakness. You know, everybody wants to do something. You know, I want to teach, you know? Um, but I can't teach everybody, you know, I, I want to do something to a certain community. And these are small kids, you know, small, extremely talented uh, kids, but they lack social infrastructure, they lack educational infrastructure, they do not have money to go to better schools. So what I do is I take schools to them. And uh, when I travel, I engage with various NGOs and uh, help build schools, help build uh, an educational curriculum, or something, you know. So, so for me, travel is just, just not about, you know, seeing the world. It's about seeing the world through my eyes, through seeing the world through my head, you know, the way I want to live my life, and the way what I want to do with my life. And um, so what I do here is, um, <coughs> is travel, you know, I treat, I look at it like a learning experience. You know, we are all here in an educational institute, one of the best in the country. And uh, at the end of the four years, you get a degree, we all get a degree, I've got a degree. But for me, the degree never mattered. It was always the learning that mattered. You know, what I studied in four years, that will stay till the last day of my life. The degree might come and go. So, so in travel, you know, I learned, I learned more about languages, more about religions, more about cultures, people, food, uh, geography, history, you name it and I learned it. Um, I never learned this in school, I never learned this in university, but I learned everything. I'll give you an example. I'm sure many of you would be aware of theory of buoyancy, Bernoulli's principle. I studied all that in school in uh, the first year of engineering as well. But uh, I, I, I understood it very, very well when I went under the water. And I actually felt Bernoulli's principle coming back at me and the buoyancy hitting me hard. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great way to learn. Travel, travel is a great leveler that way. It helps you learn. And uh, similarly, you know, we, we all know about, you know, all you photographers out here, you would don't, you'd know about the golden hours and, you know, best time to take good photographs. 
And uh, so I learned my optics while shooting in Norway, where the sun is always coming at an angle because we are up in the northern hemisphere. The photographs are always nice. There is no golden hour. The whole day is a golden hour. So I learned optics there. So like this, I've learned different things. I've tied together pieces from different parts of my life. And uh, you know, it's, it's a great learning experience. And not only that, like, like these, you know, like these kids, it gives me the opportunity to teach. It helps me share more about our lovely country, more about India, uh, more about you know, our Bollywood dancers, you know, the Bhangras, or you know, the, the foods that we have, the delicious foods that we have, Bollywood, cricket, everything, and that India is a great country. So it's, it's a two-way mechanism. Not only am I learning something about the other culture, it's also about learning about uh, them learning about who we are and what we bring to the table that India stands as a superpower in the world, not, not in terms of sheer GDP or economic size, but in terms of culture, in terms of food, in terms of people, in terms of the sheer diversity, the landscapes. You know, we have so much to offer. The more people come to India, right, we create so many more jobs. You know, tourism, every single industry uh, will, will get to benefit from it. So I'm doing my part, you know. So for all you women, out here, here's a good friend of mine. Um, in case you're wondering, you know, generally there's a lot of uh, issues with safety, women's safety while they're traveling. So I, I put this just for all you women out here. You know, this lady, Nisha, she's a very good friend of mine. She's, she's edging into the senior citizen age, but she travels alone all over the world. And uh, she, she's an inspiration for even somebody like me because she goes to some of the remotest corners of the planet. Here she's in uh, trekking in the rice terraces of Batad in the Philippines. And uh, you know, she, she goes everywhere and she goes alone. Uh, she, she started very late. She started after getting married and then you know, everybody is settled. So she started traveling and then she's gone around 20, 30 countries and she's gone there. You know, so she's doing, she also volunteers. She also does her bit. But then you know, everybody, has to push themselves. You know, that's, that's what we're talking about here. And <coughs> this is another guy. This is another friend of mine. You know, um, I met him in, first in Iran. Then I hosted him in my house in Bangalore. He's cycling from Amsterdam. He's cycling from Amsterdam. And right now, he's in Thailand. He cycled for 18 months and 26,000 kilometers. And he wants to cycle the whole world. So he's, he's pushing his limits. He's testing what he's made of. He also had a nice job. He also had this, but he wanted to see. And I'm not saying that you have to just travel to live your dream. You can do whatever it is, but, but it's all, all I'm trying to say is push, you know, push the limits. And you might be wondering is how to make money. You know, how do I make money? I keep traveling, you know, how do I make money? It's very simple. Money making is a very simple process. It's just you marry a skill with a need in the industry, right? If there is somebody who needs to be taught, you become a teacher, you have teaching skills, you make money. If somebody needs a tool and you can have the ability to make the tool, you make money. So it's marrying a skill with a need. That is how the industry works. So in the world of travel, you can do anything you like. You like scuba diving, you can open up a, you can do your scuba diving certification and open up a scuba diving shop. And you know, voila, you have a scuba diving business. You know, or you're more laid back. You know, you have lots of real estate and you want to do something like a, a homestay or an eco, eco space, uh, eco tourism center. You know, you can have something like that. It's, it's all you have to do is find what you want to do. You know, sometimes you don't know what you want to do. It's, it's all right if you don't know what, to, what you want to do, but at least give yourself the chance to, to find out what exactly is it that you want to do. And, and give, it some, give it some time, give it some time. You know, it's okay to fail. And I'll, let's, let's take me as an example. I started in 2008 um, with, a, with a hefty bank balance. Um, and pretty soon that bank balance started eroding because I was traveling and traveling, as we all know, is very expensive. So I stopped and said, oh, I need to make money. So I started a company, I failed. But I was adamant, I'm very stubborn, headstrong in my hair. And I started another one, I failed again. And um, I said, maybe I'm doing something wrong. So I did the third one. I made some money, I sold it off. And then I started a fourth one, which I'm managing right now, which is 
all right, which I've been managing for about four years. And uh, it's making enough money, you know, enough money to keep me afloat and, you know, do what I want to do. And it helps me travel as well. So, I, you know, it kept, keeps me going. And I can keep contributing more to the world, to, to society, you know, the way I want it, not the way the world wants it. The way I see um, that I'm contributing to society. So, so you know, as, as I finish, I want, to, I want you to take back uh, these two statements. Um, you know, one is live your dream. Um, when I say live your dream is keep all social dogmas aside. Keep the fact that what your father wants or what your mother wants or what your teacher wants or what the society wants, what your friends want. Find out what you want. Do it. You'll be happier. You'll definitely make money. Money will follow you. Uh, but if you have to do this, live your dream. That's, that's all I can say. And not only do you live yours, but you have to inspire others to live their dream. So you become a good Samaritan. And uh, what you, not only are you living your dream, you, you dream to inspire. Thank you so much. I'll be around here if you have any questions.